Hello everyone and welcome back to another guide for blood magic. Today we will be going over what you can make with a tier 2 altar. That includes the apprentice blood orb, the dagger of sacrifice, reinforced slates, new runes for your blood altar, and many more sigils. Yay! Let's jump right in. Now that you have your tier 2 blood altar, the first thing you want to do is to upgrade your blood orb. To do this, you need 5,000 blood in your tier 2 blood altar, and then you place a block of redstone inside it. As you wait, the block will consume all of the blood that is needed, and pop comes your apprentice blood orb. Now, the apprentice blood orb will increase your life points you can, how many life points you can have in your blood network from the 5,000 to 25,000 life points. One of the other items you can craft here at your blood altar now that it's tier 2 is a reinforced slate. And to make this, you take your blank slate and make sure your blood altar has 2,000 blood in it. You simply place it in, wait for it, and it will become a reinforced slate. This reinforced slate can be used to craft several items, including new runes that can be used for your blood altar. The first one we will go over is the Rune of Self-Sacrifice. And to craft it, you'll need four stone, one in each corner, a blank rune in the center with glowstone on either side, your blood orb at the bottom, which must be apprentice or higher, and then a reinforced slate at the top, and that will give you the rune of self-sacrifice. So if we take our rune here, head back over to our altar, you can see using my divination sigil here, that it is a tier 2 blood altar. When I get rid of one of these, it will then change to tier 1. But by taking the rune of self-sacrifice, and placing it in, and waiting for it to register, it will become a tier 2 again. So you can replace all of these with the rune of self-sacrifice to but and keep your blood altar the same tier. Now, I've been talking about this rune of self-sacrifice. What does it do? Well, it increases how much blood you put into your altar per each time you right-click with your sacrificial dagger or how much life you put into it. So Currently, you put in 200 life points without the rune of self-sacrifice. But as you can see, I have 3,000. One simple right click will give it to 3,220. So it increases it by 20 for each rune of self-sacrifice. So if we take oops, the rest of these, wait a moment for it to register them take my sacrificial dagger just one simple click it is increased to 3500 so the more runes of self sacrifice the more efficient each time you put blood into your altar before we get into the next rune i'll tell you how to make a dagger of sacrifice to make one you need to place an iron sword in your tier 2 blood altar with at least 2000 blood in it and do after waiting you will then get your dagger. The dagger sacrifice is similar to your sacrificial dagger, but instead of using your life, it will use the life points of mobs. A passive mob will give you around 250 blood, a hostile mob will give you around 500, and a villager will give you around 2000, but that does de depend on how much life the creature has. To show you how it works, I put up a little blood altar in here with some blood already in it, full of mobs. So if we take a little skeleton, push him close. Now this is using an iron sword, but as you can see, full health skeleton, it gets one shot. If you're within five blocks of the blood altar, it will kill mobs within one hit. So skeleton, you're gone. Spider, you're gone. Ooh, let's get a creeper. Oh, nope. Okay, so let's see if we can push a creeper in. Oh, Mr. Zombie, you want it? 
There we go. Creeper. There we go. Ooh, another skeleton. And then you can have... Ooh, Enderman. So as long as they're within five blocks, you can easily take them out. And as you can see, by only killing a couple of mobs, I have an almost full blood altar. So if you have a mob farm above your altar and you just want to sit there instead of using your own life and just take out mobs, that is possible to do. And this could get even better with the next item I will go over. To increase the amount you're getting from your sacrificial dagger, you need to use a rune of sacrifice. Now, to craft it, you'll need four stone in each corner again, a blank rune in the center, two gold on either side, a reinforced slate on the top, and your blood orb that is at least apprentice or higher. And this will give you your rune of sacrifice. Now, going back over to my little mob area, as you can see, these two numbers I'm giving you are after killing 10 mobs within the range of the blood altar with the sacrificial dagger. By doing this, I have used the one on the left is with no runes of sacrifice, and the ones on the right are with runes of sacrifice. Getting out of that mess. What the rune of sacrifice does is it increases the amount of blood gained from a mob killed by 20%. The Petty Tartar gem is a good start, but it can only hold 64 wills, and to get some of the better upgrades for some of the tools and the weapons, you need to hold a lot more wills. So, to upgrade this to a lesser Tartar gem, we are back on the Hellfire Forge, and by using a block of redstone, a block of lapis, a diamond, and a Petty Tartar gem, by using a Tartar gem with at least 20 will quality, because that's how much it costs. And by waiting for it to load, you have your lesser tartar gem. One thing to note is that when you use your petty tartar gem to craft it, no, use an empty one because if there are wills in it, when it is finished crafting, the lesser tartar gem that you will see in the center of your Hellfire Forge will have zero will quality. Depending on if you're Petty Tartar Gem has maybe 0.1 or 4 of 64. The Tier 2 Blood Altar also gives you access to many more sigils, and I will start with the Sigil of Elasticity. Now, to craft a reagent, you will need two slime box, one piece of string, one leather, and a Tartar Gem that is of less or higher that has at least 20 will quality, because that's how much it will cost to get the reagent. By placing it in and waiting a bit, you will have your reagent. Use your arcane ashes, place the reagent in it, take a reinforced slate, right click it, wait for the animation to be over. Even though most of these will say work in progress, you will still it will still work perfectly fine. And you now have your residual of elasticity. Now to do this. With all of these sigils, you have to right click it once to link it to your network. And then the sigil of elasticity can be deactivated, but it also needs to be activated. And the way it works is you simply go to, you know what, this is about a good height. Shift right click to activate it, it will start glowing. And you know what, let me see what happens when I go to survival. And here we go. Oh no, I am falling. Boing! And these sigils of elasticity will act just like a slime block and you will bounce when you hit the ground. And you will take no fall damage. As long as it is active till you hit the ground. Next up is the air sigil. And to make the reagent, you will need two feathers and one gas tear. Then take your tartar your lesser tartar gem with at least 20 will quality, place it in, wait a moment, and then you will have your air reagent. Do the same thing, take the ashes, place them down, reagent, and a reinforced slate, it will go, 
it will have a nice fancy time and you have your air slate air sigil I mean now air sigil doesn't give you creative flight sadly but by right clicking you will shoot through the air so you can basically fly but you can just hover in place now one other thing to note that is if you are really high and you are falling 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 right click before you hit the ground it will activate the fly effect and you will take no fall damage now let's hop right back over but every time you do this right click to fly it will cost 50 life points the sigil winter's breath reagent is made using two snowballs one block of ice one redstone and 10 will quality from a lesser tartaric gem or more then by taking the arcane ashes your reagent and your reinforced slate it will give you the sigil of winter's breath you need to right click it to link it to your network and then shift right click to activate it now what this does is if you have a source block of water you can walk over it and it will temporarily freeze it now what I mean by temporarily is that as you can see the ice starts breaking and then turning back into water but this does turn source blocks of water into a walkable surface so you can walk across oceans rivers or lakes one thing is also does that is that if you have flowing water such as you can see here the top are source blocks I activate my slate it will turn the source blocks into ice and then the water will stop flowing but if I move away you can see it already starts cracking and then it just turns black into water and flows back down the of the fast miner reagent is made using one iron pickaxe, one iron shovel, one iron axe, one gunpowder, and 10 will quality from a lesser tartar gem or higher. Take your reagent, ashes, reagent, sigil, wait for it to process, and now you have your sigil of the fast miner. What this does is after you shift right click to activate it it will give you haste 2 as you are mining which means you can mine blocks incredibly faster without needing to have a beacon nearby this will cost 100 life points every 10 seconds the seer sigil reagent is made using a divination sigil two glass and one glowstone and using a lesser tartar gem or higher but one thing I have noticed is that you can see I have 246 will quality in this tartar gem after I place it in I wait a moment I have the reagent from my sigil but I still have a tartar gem with full 246 will quality so using this, you need to have a Tartar Gem or a Demonic Will in it, but it will not use it up. At least that's what my tests have shown. It will give, now that you have your Reagent, you go Ashes, Reagent, Slate, and Wait. The Seer Sigil is an upgrade divination sigil that gives you a new overlay with new information when looking at a Blood Altar. It has the previous information of tier of the blood altar as well as how much is stored and the total capacity. The next one, as you can see demonstrated, tells you the progress of any item within the blood altar of how much total and the current progress of blood that that item needs. The next one is how much blood will be used per tick. And the last one is how much blood is stored in a charging rune but I'll go over those in a later video and in case you wanted whoops I just had another reinforced light and now I don't have a blood altar anymore 
methane. The sigil of the green grove reagent is made using two saplings of any kind and they do not need to match. One sugar cane, one sugar, 20 wool quality will give you the reagent. Taking arcane ashes, reagent, and sigil, waiting, will give you the sigil of the green grove. When the sigil of the green grove is active, and you're near crops, it will apply a bone meal effect onto multiple crops over time, as you can see. But this will cost you 150 life points every couple seconds. Last sigil we will go over is the void sigil. And to make this, you need one empty bucket, two string, one piece of gunpowder, a lesser tartar gem with at least 10 will quality, you have your void reagent. Simply go ashes, reagent, and a reinforced slate, you'll have your void sigil. Now, what a void sigil does is it will remove any source block of a liquid that you can see. It works similar to a bucket, but instead of picking it up, it deletes it. So, as you can see here, we have this nice little mountain of lava. Oh no, I don't have any buckets on me. Whatever shall I do? Oh, I have my void sigil. But let's get rid of this lava to reveal the treasures underneath. There you go, removing lava with a void sigil will 100% give you diamonds in this exact pattern and this many because this is 100% well gen. And I totally did not make this myself. Now you have all you need to continue your journey through Blood Magic. That is all I have for you today. If you enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe for more Minecraft guides and the occasional other video. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye.